the most popular portable music and entertainment device today, which you may be using to play this video right now, is of course the smartphone. And before then, in the 2000s, it was the portable MP3 player. And before then, in the 1990s, it was the portable CD player. And before then, in the 1980s, it was the portable cassette tape player. And that's probably as far back as most of my viewers remember. But before then, back in ancient history, the most popular portable battery-powered pocket-sized device that people were using to listen to music anywhere on the go was the transistor radio. The tiny blue transistor radio. The first commercially manufactured transistor radio was the Regency TR1, introduced in 1954. But the heyday of the transistor radio was really in the 1960s and 1970s, when they were mass manufactured in the Far East and sold at discount prices. For example, in 1971, you can get a typical basic AM transistor radio for under $5 or a model that also had FM for around $15. But that was 50 years ago. What about today? Is it still possible to get a decent quality transistor radio now? Well, the answer is yes, and it's actually from a brand that I'm sure everyone recognizes, Sony. Yes, they actually do still sell a transistor radio today. It has AM and FM, a small built-in speaker, a folding out antenna for FM, the AM antenna is built in. You get a switch for AM and FM, the tuning dial, the volume control, and a headphone output. And it runs on two AA batteries. And it comes with a wrist strap, and that's really about it. And the fit and finish of this radio is excellent. The plastics are all high quality. The battery door is captive, so you can't lose it. It feels just like a Sony product from the 90s because it probably is a Sony product from the 90s that they simply kept on making. And although this is not a stereo radio on either AM or FM, it does have a stereo headphone jack. So unlike vintage transistor radios which were designed to play through one of those awful single earphones, you can plug in a normal pair of stereo headphones and hear the audio through both ears. It's the Sony ICF P26, and you can buy it right now, brand new, on Amazon for around $29. So let's try it out, first on FM. A house explodes in Ponton Lakes, New Jersey, with six firefighters inside at about 2 this morning. The six firefighters were called to a house because of thick black smoke in the basement. As they made That's 1010 down... Winds, the news station in New York City, which is now simulcasting on 92.3 FM. <sighs> Daniel Jr. on the other side. The next time you hear, Dad, I need you to drop me off at Kobe Data and 5D to Hotspot. Plus, finally, some nice peace and quiet on FM, but you can hear it's picking up plenty of stations all across the dial. So, very good reception on FM. And this is one of the weaker signals that's coming in nice and strong. But the dial calibration is a little bit off because this is supposed to be 105.9 and it's showing around 104. So it's like the whole dial's kind of shifted downwards. But otherwise, good reception on FM. Doesn't get very loud. But that was typical for transistor radios. They have rather low output power because you don't want to be annoying everyone else around you with this thing. So they purposely kept the maximum volume kind of low. Monday mornings at 11 on the Classical Network and at www.fm.org. I'm actually impressed with speaking up this station, WWFM 89.1. Even my full-size component tuner has difficulty picking up a clean signal from this station. It's not coming strong enough to light up the tuning indicator, but you can hear it's coming in perfectly listenable. On the Classical Network and WWFM.org. Now let's try AM. I'm doing any real vehicle on our lot, including our huge selection of 
Hill Cars Trust SUV, $3,000. At Lamar Valley Ford, we have by far the largest inventory of new Fords in Vermont, along with a huge selection of pre-owned vehicles. And we have instructed our entire team to make deals and earn your business. Woo! Just heard an ad for a Ford dealer in Vermont. I'm here in New Jersey, so that's some kind of station from a couple hundred miles away. It is nighttime right now, so the reception on AM is better for long distance. Users benefiting from or owning part of the platforms they're using via tokens and digital assets and transacting in digital currencies to power... The speaker is kind of radley, but that was pretty typical for transistor radios. I mean, it's a little plastic enclosure, so it's common for the speaker to make it rattle when you turn up the volume. Here's a song people would have listened to on one of these back in the 60s. And a song people have listened to on a transistor radio in the 70s. The love hour is on the air. Now, I want to say hi to cousin Jim Corsette. Hello, Jim. Uh, he said, I'll be listening tonight, Brucey, after I get home from the hospital visiting my wife. I hope everything is going well. God bless you. And please tell your wife, Jim, that we set up a winner. And this is Jim's song to his wife. That was a voice people may remember in the New York City area. Cousin Brucey, the famous DJ from WABC and later CBS FM. Now he's back on WABC AM radio. Saturday nights he has his oldies show, so that's a nice throwback. Now I'll give you some direct hookup samples of this transistor radio taken from its headphone output. So you can hear what it sounds like directly through your speakers instead of through this little speaker. We're here with attorney Mark Miner of the personal injury law firm of Zalman, Schnurman and Miner. But he is a kukulamunga, he's a Fruit Loop Trooper, he's a nut job like we have discovered so many of the others are in the House of Representatives on both sides of the aisle. We got our crackpots, screwballs, nor dwells on the Republican side. We might as well call them a uh, squad, so to speak, led by George. I never told the truth in my life, Santos, right? Do you have taxiety? That uncertain feeling knowing taxes are due and you don't know what to do. 710 WOR, the voice of New York. It's 30 degrees in New Jersey. Fast traffic and instant weather every 15 minutes on New Jersey 101.5. New Jersey 101.5, our own radio station. Not New York, not Philadelphia. Proud to be New Jersey. New Hampshire, softrockradio.net, the lighter side of classic rock, and more. There is a young cowboy who lives on the ring. I think that proves that with a strong signal and a high quality tuner, AM can sound almost as good as FM. Inside, it's very simple, just one single-sided circuit board. There's the AM ferret bar antenna, the tuning capacitor, a couple coils, a ceramic filter for the AM tuner. There's the band switch and on-off switch, volume control, headphone output, and the built-in 8-ohm 0.2-watt speaker, which is just glued to the cabinet, so that's why it's prone to buzzing when you turn up the volume. And just one chip which runs the whole show. It's a Sony CXA1019S, which is an integrated AM-FM radio tuner and 500 milliwatt audio amplifier. But unfortunately, I just discovered that this model, the ICFP26, has recently been discontinued and replaced with the ICF 
P27, which looks nearly identical, except it's a few dollars cheaper and the tuning dials arranged a little bit differently. And you may ask, what's the difference? Well, this radio is based on an old-fashioned analog tuner chip. The ICF P27 is based on a digital tuner chip. That model may still look like it has an analog tuning dial, but it's really masquerading as one because it has that digital tuner chip, which is constantly scanning the position of this tuning dial. And if it detects that it has changed, it'll retune itself to whatever frequency you've selected. Thankfully, it still has good reception and no annoying choppiness as you tune across the dial, unlike most other DSP-based tuners. So if you want a true analog tuning radio from Sony, you better get one of these ICF P26s while they're still in stock because this will probably be your last chance. Because giving you options is the right thing to do. Oh yeah, like when I hold the door for someone. Sure, it may be weird if I don't time it right, and they're a little too far away, and oh, now they're running. And we're both asking ourselves, is it worth it to run instead of just, you know, letting them open their own door?